Oh, hello, and welcome to my bedroom. Oh, you didn't recognize me at first, did you? Yes, it's true. I shaved off the face blanket, but no worries, it'll grow back. Please, come lay at my feet while I tell you a story. In 2006, during a hot, hot summer day, over a thousand Hollanders showed up to a World Cup match wearing lederhosen. Unfortunately, the traditional Dutch garbs were provided by a local brewery that had its name on it. The almighty FIFA is extremely protective of its sponsors, and they did not like this one bit. So, instead of shrugging it off, they had people strip down and go pantsless instead. So that's why today, lederhosen are considered a symbol of virility, and brawn, and the sound of music. This week I picked up The Dead and the Dying number one, Casanova number one, Sex Criminals number ten, Batman number 38, Thor number four, and Bitch Planet number two. Am I allowed to say that out loud? This is a lot of books, so we'll just keep it to the basics. But if you don't want to wade in the water, just click on any book title over there and skip on ahead. If you're still here, you get to see some random footage from my hard drive. The Dying and the Dead, number one. Here we have a brand new series from Jonathan Hickman, and wow, this is a thick issue. Look at all those pages. We jump right into the life of an older man who is that kind of uh, veteran, no-nonsense, sort of tough white guy. His wife is dying from cancer, but he's given the opportunity to save her with the help of some paranormal forces. It's a great setup for what will follow. The art is pretty good. The coloring is very similar to East of West, which uh, typically uses only one color per panel. I will say that I noticed a glaring art continuity error and a spelling error in the one issue. However, the rest of the story kept my interest, so I won't let that get in my way. So, should you buy it? It was a decent start, but there's no meat yet. It seems like these aren't really flying off the shelves either, but it could be a good series. Get it if you're looking to fill out your pull. Casanova, Acedia number one. I never read the original Casanova when it first came out, but I saw this on the shelf and thought I'd give it a shot. If you know anything about the series, about Casanova, help a lazy guy out in the comments because I am totally unaware of Casanova prior to this issue. It was a fun read. In any case, I like this. It's gritty, but light, and it's excellent writing. Matt Fraction does a good job, and I find myself interested in what happens next. So, should you buy it? I think that even though it doesn't convey the same epicness as The Dying and the Dead, uh, I'd pick this one up first, but again, only if you're looking for a good filler. Sex Criminals number 10. Speaking of Mad Fraction, <sighs> I don't know what to say about this issue, and uh, I'm not going to go into detail either. So, should you buy it? If you're a prude, avoid it. If you aren't, pick it up. Batman number 38. Man, I love the covers on these books. They're so glossy and thick. That said, I was fairly unimpressed with this issue. Basically, there was too much text and not enough happening. I caught myself not even looking at the art because it didn't even apply to what was being said. However, I still love Batman. And I still love Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. Capullo? Capullo? So, should you buy it? This issue is definitely not a jumping on point, so don't get it unless you've been picking it up. If you want to jump into Batman, start with Endgame number one. Thor number four. Now this is an excellent book. Here we finally get to see some Thor on Thor action, and boy is it fun. It seems like the story purposefully addresses the haters and keeps doing its thing. The writers in the art are great, and we find out that the new Thor is definitely not Freya. Oh, spoilers. So. Should you buy it? Even if you haven't been reading it, this issue is worth it. Pick it up and eat your heart out. Bitch Planet number two. Issue one was kind of a setup. You started reading expecting it to be a Shawshank-esque story, except the supposed main character gets killed almost immediately. 
What we're left with is an interesting new introduction to issue two. I'm not sure how this is all going to pan out, but it's kind of looking like Fight Club meets Green Mile. The art is stylized in a good way, and the writing moves the story along nicely. So, should you buy it? Do you need any more convincing than Fight Club meets Green Mile? No. <sighs> well, I'm not going to spend any more time talking to you tonight, because I'm done. You can find something else to do until you see me again. I am going to stare at the ceiling for eight hours because I don't sleep. Maybe next week I'll let you under the covers. Good night.